Warning! Tube amplifiers have lethal voltages inside them. Please do not attempt to build, test, or repair these without understanding and following all safety protocols. Hey y'all! Well, I wanted to give you a little update on the KT120 model blocks. I did get the first one finished up to the point where I was able to put it on the scope, was able to hook it up to the audio analyzer suite, do some performance pulls on it, and I'm liking what I'm seeing. It does need a little bit of tuning still, which is just like the bias point on the driver tube, I think is a little too hot, and I'm seeing some asymmetrical clipping at the very you know end of the power peak and then there's a little more distortion up at the upper power levels as well that i think can be tuned out working with the feedback circuit in it and so i still want to play around with stuff so we're not at the final design yet but 14 watts before it starts clipping which is exactly what I was hoping to see out of this and so given that we're using some output transformers that are a little higher Z than some people might normally use we should be able to get the distortion down below 2% at that 14 watts as well and should be able to hit 11 maybe even 12 watts at 1% so should be able to get a lot of really clean power out of this thing. And especially like for my uses, I'm probably not going to be using more than probably 8 watts. And so it's going to be like really clean compared to, you know, when I start having to push my EL34 amp when I'm listening to some rowdy music that I really want to crank up. Because one of the things that I have noticed that these ultralinear amps do really seem to work better listening to kind of rock and roll kind of music where a 300B works better for jazzy kind of stuff. And so it'll be nice to have an option of having um, a higher power amp that's maybe a little snappier with that kind of rowdy music when I'm in that kind of mood to listen to something like that. And who knows, guys, I was saying that I'm going to sell these. I may end up just keeping them because I like them that much. Don't know. Did get an email back from Thermion Thermionic Labs. I'll put the link below. I may be saying that wrong. It's a hard word. To, it's hard to pronounce. But anyway, put the link below. They said they're already getting inquiries for the transformers. And I gave them a list so that you can buy all the iron for this project from them. So they're going to be getting set up to have the... Uh, basically an iron kit that's going to have power transformer, the external choke, the internal choke, and of course their output transformer. And so far I'm impressed with the performance that I'm seeing out of these. And I did give a short listen to it. I think it's going to be awesome, guys. So just wanted to kind of give you an update of where we're on this. And again, once I get this one tuned in, with all the, you know, tuning and parts that I'm definitely going to build this with, we're going to do the second one in a very step-by-step -step manner so you can follow along and build one of these for yourself. But I'm comfortable enough to say right now, if you're interested in doing something like this, go ahead and buy the iron. This is going to work. Again, some of the little fine-tuning parts may change a little bit, but we're, you know, talking a few resistors here or there. The, you know, the main guts of this thing are going to be the bomb. The other thing that I am going to do as well is I'm going to use a WEMA 30UF 600-volt cap on the front-end filter too because I just want to go overkill. I want to make sure that all the caps are way beyond the voltage that this thing will ever make, even as it's warming up. So you don't have to worry about caps exploding or causing some kind of problems or running things out of spec. Because I, I just don't like running caps you know, past the voltage that they're rated at or even right on the voltage. Plus, having a film cap for the front end tube filtering is just going to help it sonically as well. 
because I'm a believer in if you use high quality caps for filtering, you don't end up having to put film caps to bypass them. And that's why we're using a big Solene film cap for the first cap in the power supply. And we're also going to be using a WEMA cap for the front end filtering. You will notice it doesn't have the skunky badge on yet. We're not going to put that on it until this thing's fine-tuned and ready to go. And again, I may end up pulling this front cover off and getting them to engrave skunky in the front of it. But I may just stick one of my nice silver labels on it. It's probably going to look fine just like that too. So anyway, I'll put a link to Transformer Company. I'll also put a link where I buy these tube rings. I also bought my bias resistor from them too. They've got this nice one that's got a lock nut on it. And you can see here I put the test point jacks up in the very front. And you know, if you really wanted to for aesthetic reasons, you could put them back here. But I'm always this, you know, shortest wire possible. And that makes these right up next to where they're measuring without wires crossing each other or whatever. I just thought I'd put them up here in the front. They're easy to get to as well. And the other thing that I really like about this design is putting this RCA jack right here. The signal path from the RCA jack to the tag strip it's about a half an inch long and so no need for any kind of shielded wiring in it then you can have all the shielded wire on the external in the you know the rca shielded wires the interconnects that you're going to use so i'm just i'm just really excited the way this is, things turned out oh and let me show you the speaker jacks look awesome too they're these kind of I don't know, mushroom kind of shaped ones. Not really mushroom, but they're, you know, flared out on the end. And they're aluminum. I mean, they're steel, but they're the same color as the, the chassis. And I thought that really turned out really looking nice. And then I used, like, some little chrome head screws that for holding the choke and stuff to the back plate. And, again, there's the IEC connector. So, just, it turned out really clean. And there's, there's no visible screws on anything on the top of it. Plus the inside wiring super clean as well. I'm just really happy with the way this build is turning out. And again, I know kind of that R300 got put on the back burner a little bit because this is what I love doing. It's just building stuff like this from scratch and coming up with my own kind of cool designs. And you just don't see single-ended KT120 amplifiers for sale or even, you know, designs out there. And so I thought this was going to be a really cool thing. And like I said, I'm excited too that being a fixed bias, this thing should be able to adjust to run KT88s and then changing the rectifier tube to one with a higher voltage drop. We should be able to also get it to run EL34 tubes. So it's got a lot of, you know, usability for a lot of different things so you could have it a setup for like listening to jazz music maybe with el34 tubes with a 5u4 kind of a rectifier tube and then when you want to rock and roll pop the kt120 in it the 5ar4 and crank up the bias and let it rip so anyway hope you're enjoying my channel i hope you're enjoying the content I'm really trying to do some cool innovative kind of stuff got some other cool projects coming in the future when I get these done got kind of an endless list of stuff and of course we've got other people that are sending me China amps I got um, Wilsonton is sending me what's supposed to be their upgraded skunkify R8 which they've implemented the things that I found in the previous video that just didn't seem right about the way the amp was built and actually had a viewer email me that just bought an R8 and said, man, I bought it and was planning on doing your mods and it looks like it's already done. So it'll be interesting to see what they send. They may be already implementing the stuff that I've showcased on my channel about upgrading that amp. So, hey, that's good stuff coming out of my YouTube channel. If products for sale to the community are being improved based off things that I'm showcasing on my channel. So, 
that's fun stuff. So again, if you're enjoying this content, please subscribe to the channel. Please like the video. Thank you to you Patreon folks and also to you people that have made donations to the channel. If you find my content has helped you fix problems or whatever with your own personal stuff, if you could toss me a little donation, that would be awesome. And again, thanks to viewers that send me cool stuff to review for you guys so we can have fresh content. So anyway, till the next video, have a great day. Bye.